So uh, thank you for your words, Andrea. It is a pleasure to be also a friend and also to to face my 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 period of and also my my career with yours. I think it was quite interesting to work together in Pavia, and also we are still working together. I hope we can do it also in the future. And also, I like to thank to Stadata for this quite interesting seminar, and uh, I hope that with this presentation uh, that is titled challenges on the seismic assessment and strengthening of traditional masonry buildings i will expose and also show briefly what we have been doing in this area in the last years so my presentation is divided in four uh, main points the first will be the small introduction then we'll pass also to the uh, the presentation of some applied research and developments that we have been doing with remuri and then we'll pass to the main scope of this presentation, that is to describe our methodology and also uh, with the application to two case studies and in the end, some final remarks on this uh, subject. So as and Andrea was saying, I'm also founder and partner of NCREP, Consultancy on Rehabilitation of Built Heritage. We are a spin-off from the University of Porto. We are uh, now, this year, this year we are 10 years old. And we are a group of civil engineers with advanced formation in the field of existing constructions with master and phd degrees and we have also currently a strong collaboration with laboratories and international research groups our main services are four that can be divided in the inspection and diagnosis also the structural health monitoring passing through seismic assessment and in the end the design of rehabilitation and sustainable projects of different type of constructions Taking into account a good network that we are be doing from, from research in, in Portugal, but also in Spain, Belgium, and in Italy. And indeed, we, with a very good collaboration that we had been developing with the University of Pavia, we've been, we have been doing uh, uh, several works on the characterization of the seismic behavior of traditional masonry buildings in low seismicity regions. Uh, we have been working mainly in Porto, and this last year we have been also able to do some work in the city of Liège in Belgium. Uh, the approach was similar, so we started from the selection of the most representative building archetypes. From these ones, we develop and we, well, we didn't develop, we calibrate the macro element parameters to simulate the in plane behavior for these type of buildings, and then we pass through the analysis of typical buildings from these two cities. So these are seven models that we used in Porto region. And we, based on these models, we did linear static assessment with Ramuri. And also uh, from there, we analyzed the, the buildings on original conditions and then also on retrofitted ones. And then we validate these values, these results with nonlinear dynamic analysis take into account uh, the flexibility of the, the, of the diaphragms and also making use of, of these models with this this is a work that we just finished this 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 year we passed to the seismic assessment of freestanding elements as for example chimneys parapets at the top of the of these buildings so we could also apply nonlinear static assessment and nonlinear dynamic analysis to evaluate the seismic performance of this type of buildings this has been, been doing also with a great collaboration with Professor Andre Pena, making use of Tremuri. And we applied more or less the same uh, approach for these uh, two buildings that are like uh, three and two and three for, uh, story buildings typical of the edge that can represent um, more or less 25% of the habitational buildings within the city. So uh, one of the, our main purposes is to continue developing new tools or at least increase the knowledge in the area of existing construction so we, then we can apply some of these concepts in our uh, daily base designs. In this case, the last point was to derive fragility curves and perform risk analysis for the city of Liège. Concerning the method, the, this methodology that we applied for assessment, assessment of existing structures, so we starting always from the characterization of structural systems. Of course, you already know this, but at least let's rephrase this again. Then passing through the complete inspection and diagnosis, 
then passing through the mechanical characterization with non-destructive and semi-destructive tests on masonry and then also on timber, reinforcing concrete or steel elements in the case if we have it. And then concerning the calibration, mainly of the numerical models, we use also the model identification techniques with alien vibration tests. And <clears throat> with all this information, we develop our numerical models specifically for the seismic assessment, where Tremuri is our main software concerning masonry structures. With, all, with all, all these elements, we are able to define the best strengthening solutions for each type of building. Let's also make some overview of the what is the actual conditions in Portugal. Uh, despite we have been working and we know that Europe collates, we uh, use all around Europe, in Portugal, it is just a little, as a legal uh, normative since 2019. And since 2019, it is mandatory to perform the seismic vulnerability assessment reports for existing buildings. However, we have been using Tremuri since 2016. And one of the cases that I'm going to show you is the first building that we uh, simulate making use of Tremuri. What are our, our main challenges? are main, basically the definition of um, masonry mechanical properties for seismic assessment, because there is not a, uh, like a huge database that we can consult. For example, as you have it on the uh, Italian normative, we have where you have very good indications of the masonry properties. In Portugal, we don't have this type of information. So what usually we do, we make a literature-based definition with a special relevance to the Italian normative. And also we use uh, our database that we are still uh, increasing. We have now uh, almost 50, for example, 50 double flat check tests performed on different type of uh, masonry uh, structures. And our main goal is to continue to increase this database so we could we can more specifically um, select the best mechanical properties so take into account all this element and all this information i'm going to show you the, these two case studies one of what, the, the first one the same strengthening of uh, an existing uh, old palace in olivellas it is that this one on the left and on the right I'm going to show you a seismic performance assessment that we made for a building at the build at Lisbon downtown. Both of these buildings are what we can consider it moderate to high seismic hazards from 0.25 to 0.3 G of PGA due to the soil type of the, in the, for these buildings, soil type C for the left building on the left and soil type D for the building on the right. And in Portugal, we must work with uh, both type of earthquakes, so earthquake type one and earthquake type two. Concerning the first case study, <clears throat> so we have a ground floor, first floor, and also the attic that was used during the, all these years, and uh, this is a building that, with an estimated date of construction uh, on the 18th century, with a total area of construction of 780 square meters. It is a traditional masonry and timber structure, and it was abandoned since 2005. Uh, what were the main challenges in this, uh, this building? Despite be uh, low, it was, it was not a very high building, a very low building, but one of the, the main challenges was to be used as a museum. Uh, and we'll see afterwards what were these implications on the design. And also we have flexible diaphragm with timber floors. And one of the major problems of this building was the presence of a severe termite attacks. This is, for example, a wall in the last floor. This is a, a lightweight timber wall fully attacked with termites. You can see it on the right. So this means that the uh, timber elements were with, uh, in a bad state of conservation. Uh, one, uh, let's say that in the end, this was a problem, but the major problem was that at the first floor, so between the ground floor and the, the attic, the roof, we have all these walls that has mural painting. So this, this, were, this was a, a major problem in this case study. So these walls were painted, and one of the main 
purposes of this intervention was to keep the first floor exactly as it was. So the uh, floorboards, walls, also all the wooden elements, and if possible, also the, the ceiling. And then we decide how to do it, how to analyze it, and then how to strengthen to keep all these elements. So this is just a presentation of the structural configuration. We have at the, uh, at the perimeter uh, walls, there were uh, stone masonry, a regular stone masonry, basically uh, mainly on limestone, uh, limestone. We have also some internal walls on masonry. And then we have some more timber framed uh, walls that were also used as load bearing walls. This is for the ground floor. This is the first floor structural plan. You can see these the alignments of the timber elements. And here at the bottom, we have the structural intervention based on the inspection and diagnosis phase and considering also the vertical load. So you can see it clearly that this area in the back, it was in the best state of consideration, while these five compartments at the front were those ones that had those uh, moral, moral paintings. So the main point was to keep this, these areas as they were, if possible, of course. So why did you select Tremuri first? Was that with this um, software, we could take into account the nonlinear behavior of the masonry, making use of the nonlinear static procedures that we can analyze this type of buildings. Also, we like it very much because it's a very simple and fast modeling for assessment and design of strength interventions. And it is possible to evaluate the evolution of damages and detect also vulnerable areas. Also, as we have the problem of the diaphragm's flexibility, we could also assess the influence of the diaphragm flexibility in the, in the, with different type of solutions. So what came out from this um, this analysis was that the original structure did not possess sufficient seismic capacity. And for, for in order to improve this type of behavior, we simulate different diaphragm flexibility, where we derive it in increase, uh, improve significantly the global behavior of the building. And then we have also the problem of uh, masonry and mechanical properties that they were not enough to sustain the seismic actions. So we simulate also different type of intervention as wall injections, mainly on the uh, masonry walls and also reinforced the concrete plaster that we, again, we didn't want to use it, but we just want to assess the, the efficiency of this type of uh, intervention. All these improvements were made based on the masonry properties that the, 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 the improvements that comes from the Italian code. This is an image for the same displacement for a pushover analysis along the x direction so along the main facade we can see here the the the, the main facade damage pattern you can see it, that we have uh, like some damage concentration here on the on the edges some more damages at the bottom and also some uh, failures of the elements along the building and you can see it that on the strengthening structures mainly based on the the stiffening of the diaphragm, some improvements of the masonry properties, we could have a more spread damages and with not a lot of damage concentration on certain elements. <clears throat> Taking this to account, we, 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 we have here some images of intervention. So for example, the application of syntec anchorage systems at the corners, at the edges, so we could connect perpendicular walls also, same improvements of the diaphragm stiffness. How did we do it? So we took into account the existing timber elements that were in the best set of conservation, but we introduced intermediate supports so we could maintain these elements. So we could keep the floorboards at the upper floors. And making use of horizontal timber trusses, we increased like, the, the stiffness of the diaphragm to, to uh, under shear forces, under distortion forces. Also connecting all these elements at the perpendicular walls, we were improving also the connection between horizontal and vertical elements. This is an image at the top of the ground floor. 
and this is an image at the top of the first floor. So we have a new timber um, floor uh, for the attic, and we use a double layer of OSB strain boards. So we, we were improving also the shear stiffness of the diaphragms. Concerning the global behavior and local behavior of masonry, some of the masonry elements you can see here images from the ground floor, they were reconstructed. You making use of timber framed walls. These, uh, these, is, these are some images from the walls, uh, so from the demolished part that was not in a good state of conservation. And they were supposed to be injected, but during the, the construction works in the end, it was decided not to go for a museum, but to just go for a more common office building. And it was in the end possible not to use injections to improve the seismic behavior. And here's some local reconstruction of also of the timber floors, of all the uh, frontal walls. And now some final images, just to figure out what can be done. So we can see here that all this, these paintings were maintained. These are the original floorboards. The roof, the, the ceiling was reconstructed. This is the same compartment before and after the intervention. And it came out that with Remuri, we were able to keep the building as it was. Uh, our main purpose is that was to keep the first floor. So the second case study I want to show you is a typical building from Lisbon, and it is a, a five-story high building. And it, it was with a possible date of construction in the late of the 19th century, and it has a total area of 600, 500, uh, 6,500 square meters, also with a traditional timber masonry structure. So you can see here the right and mainly at the perimeter walls of limestone uh, masonry walls, the inner core also of uh, masonry walls, and then we have some intermediate walls that are load bearing walls that now we'll see how are they built. So what were the main challenges here? Was the the extensive inspection and diagnosis campaign to characterize correctly these masonry elements, so in order to model it correctly. Also, the mechanical characterization that we may use with the flat check tests, also some cores, and then we also evaluate the dynamic behavior of the building, making use of ambient vibration tests. And this was a problem because this was a corner building, and, and this could be a problem that we need to address and to assess with the seismic analysis. Uh, the final occupation of the building was to be used as offices. So taking into account all the information, we start doing the work. And one, one of the first points was that we figured out that these are some images from the late 19th century. And until 1940, the building was just three story high. So in the middle of the, of the 20th century, it's came up with more two stories. Also, another uh, surprise was that these external and the inner core walls, they were built on masonry walls, on masonry, but the internal load bearing walls were made on timber, mainly timber elements that were supporting all these five stories. So what we used was to we develop we used two numerical models, one finite element model for gravity loads, and also to assess some local or global behavior for electro loads. But then we used Tremui for the seismic evaluation of this type of buildings. On the right, you have the model identification first mode of vibration for the three models, second mode of vibration for the three models, and from this on we calibrate our numerical models in order to do the seismic assessment. What was used in our Tremuri model was to assume only masonry walls as primary seismic elements, as you can see it here. So these intermediate walls were not introduced due to negligible contribution to, uh, to the seismic resistance. We have been some doing some works in this area, and in the end, uh, all the, the stiffness and the strength of the masonry is not is too too big to be able to distribute the seismic forces for other vertical elements. So <clears throat> what came out with the linear analysis with the finite element method was to 
evaluate some local problems, mainly due to workloads. For example, this was a large opening at the ground floor. This is from, from the here in the middle. This is at the inner core, where we have big steel profiles supporting like a four-story height walls. So we use it mainly for vertical loads. We try to understand what came out uh, concerning uh, horizontal loads, but in the end, Tremuri was fundamental. So we can we could introduce correctly the overall uh, properties of the building. We with Tremuri we were able, for example, that we were not able with the finite element model to um, identify a problem of a stop, soft story mechanism the front facade and also at the inner core walls this area over here also it was a, a big problem due to the non, uh, not existence of continuity along the height we try also to simulate some different uh, solutions of strengthening but in the end only shear walls with coupling beams with coupling beams were able to uh, retain some of the seismic forces and from then uh, keep some seismic forces outside from the masonry walls. So as final remarks, uh, I would say just uh, that indeed before starting to go for a deep uh, seismic assessment of an existing building, it is in, quite important to do a complete inspection and diagnosis. And of course, that when we are doing, when we are working with existing masonry buildings, inland linear behavior is fundamental. And for these purposes, of course, Tremuri comes with a fast and efficient tool for the linear seismic assessment. Uh, just as a final comment, what we have been facing is that for these massive masonry buildings, we have a very difficulties to change the primary seismic system, system from masonry walls to other type of systems. So what came as an, as an next challenge that is coming in the next few days, next few, mo few months, is going to be the the modeling, the seismic assessment model for these monastery of Olivellas, and of course, Tremuri will be again our main software. I'll let you also hear with the Anna Simões contact, that is a Portugal, uh, the, the, the representation in Portugal of Tremuri. If you need something, just contact him. And also, thank you, Stadata, for this nice seminar. And if you have any question, please just let me know.